Okay, uh, I'd like to welcome Mayor Bain. We'll call the meeting to order. Uh, we'll start with the pledge and then uh, we'll win assignment. Silence. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll start off with consent items. <clears throat> uh, certification in November 17th executive session. The minutes of the November 17th regular meeting. And uh, the minutes of the December 3rd study session. We have any additions or corrections? And we also had uh, the, okay, Sandy just handed out the, if you had a I chance, we just got the December 3rd ones to look at, so. Any additions or correction to those? If not, we'll uh, uh, continue on with the financial report and the claims. Beginning with 5839 for $56,829.51 for the uh, October state local taxes. And, uh, okay, claimed, okay, that was sent out on December 12th. Tom, I did end, add the last one after I got those finished. So, uh, last claim was $6105 for $7.50, $7.50 for key. Oh. So, that's the range. All right, thank you. Is that Poodle Inlet? Works, workspace Solutions. Any questions? Uh, have a report on the funds? Our general fund at the end of uh, November, we're doing pretty well. We have a cash balance of 744, 985.46. Um, and looking at things, we're gonna have enough appropriations and stuff to end the year, so that looks good. The debt service, no change, that's going to go down drastically because we will pay our bills, our debt at the end of the month for December. Our capital projects, as you see, is negative. Uh, we will be getting our tax dollars in, so that will you know, become positive and we'll be okay there also. Our transportation fund is doing fine. It has $567,938.94. And our bus replacement has uh, $86,656.81. Okay, anybody have any questions? Do you yeah. feel at this point for what your cash balance will end on um, for general fund? Um, it's looking right now with I mean, these expenses. And when I first got here, I ran real quick on all the fund reports and stuff. And it was probably around 300000 how and much will come into the capital projects fund? That I'm not sure of because I find if I go off the revenue report, sometimes you don't know if that's one that usually comes that if you receive all your taxes or not. Is, is it normal to have two months in a row in the negative? If you're um, running pretty close, yes. Okay. Because you know you only get your tax dollars twice a year in June, and then you have to wait, and they, they hold on to their money as long as possible. So they wait until about the last week of December before they you know, give that to you. And my understanding is, um, and we're going to look into it, and we're going to use some stuff for your your project that came on your construction fund was paid out of here that needs to be moved back into the other. We're going to look into that. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? If not, uh, I'd like a motion to uh, 
accept the mi minutes and the uh, financial and fund report. I'll make that motion. Okay, we have a motion by Don. Second? I'll second. Second by Lisa. Any other questions? All in favor, right hand, please. Okay, motion carried 6-0. Uh, now we'll move on to resolution. We have a uh, prepayment resolution. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions on the resolutions? Any motion to approve the resolutions? One at a time or both at once? Um, we could probably do both, couldn't we? Did. I'll, I'll move to uh, approve the prepayment resolution as well as the resolution to close to 2014 year end. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion by Joe, second by Sandy. Any other discussion? All in favor, right hand, please. Okay, motion carries 6 0. Under uh, student and stakeholder focus, uh, we have donations. First robotics team, $200 from Advance Magnetics, $30 from a patron, $150 from New Holland, Rochester, $100 from Webb's Family Pharmacy. $50 from Fretz Abstract Company and $25 from Fincher and Fincher. And uh, let's see, under the FFA had uh, $150 from Mike and Marcia Childers. And we had some additional donations. $100 from Youth Service Alliance <clears throat> for the JAG program. $100 from uh, First Baptist Church Fellowship Guild <coughs> to Life Skills class. And uh, Notre Dame Athletic Department uh, donated girls basketball tickets and a uh, flag. Walmart, two, two, two 32 inch TVs, one for each semester. Uh, football moms, a sock cap, and uh, Rochester Middle School Faculty Fund $25 <clears throat> Visa card and uh, earbuds. And we have a couple pending uh, Nubianos pizza coupon and a Blockbuster movie rental. Uh, let's see, then we'll talk plain after that. So, uh, could I have a motion to approve uh, those donations? What were those for? Which ones? I guess all of them. I don't they sound <clears throat> Many of the donations that Tom read at the end, the Notre Dame tickets, Walmart, football moms, Rochester Middle School faculty staff, and Mr. Ross can speak to this, but that is for their PBIS celebrations okay. for behavioral improvement. The other, I believe, were just donations to specific classes like the life skills class and then also for JAG. Okay. Will we accept the donations presented? Okay. Um, motion by Jim. A second? A second. And second by Sandy to accept the donations. Uh, all in favor, right hand please. Okay, motion carries 6-0. Uh, now we have a uh, plane that's gonna be donated. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, would you like to speak about that? Sure. Um, Joe Lau and Mr. Rump submitted an application uh, several years ago, um, an opportunity to receive an airplane and nothing was uh, specified. <coughs> request as to the condition of the aircraft, whether it be in flying condition or if 
it was uh, one step away from a junkyard. Um, we have had a previous aircraft owners come to us, or come to the organization called Build a Plane, and offer aircraft and turn them down. The one that um, is before us now is a Piper Cherokee 140. It hasn't been flown for 14 years, hasn't been annual in that amount of time, and it's been sitting next to a barn. The farmer used to have a runway, and he just hasn't kept up his aircraft. Um, we don't know the condition for sure, but it definitely has all the elements of an aircraft and would fit nicely with Project Lead the Way. And any students that are interested in knowing more about um, just inspecting the aircraft, knowing how they work, um, we can take sheets of skin off. They can see how the inside structure of the wing is formed, um, and so on and so forth. It's a um, there's no cost to the schools, and um, I would arrange for a group of um, pilot fanatics, airplane fans, to um, dismantle the wings and trailer it to the airport, uh, where the hangar has been donated by the Fulton County Airport Authority for its storage. Um, it could also be stored um, at the schools if there was room. I really don't know where we would put it. So I think the airport works about the <coughs> spot. Um, the contract was written that build a plane and the previous owner obviously have no liability from the time we take ownership of the aircraft. Um, if there is any chance that the aircraft could be started, um, we would disable it. We'd remove spark plugs, battery, um, whatever we needed to do to make sure that the aircraft could not be started and moved on its own power. Um, there is no time frame on this donation as to how long we have to use it. Um, the past one we had to use it for training purposes for at least two years. This one, if it didn't work out, but it was benefiting us. Um, we could sell it for scrap. We could try to find a buyer. We could donate it to another school um, for, for whatever we decided on. The appraised value of the aircraft is $6,500, and the gentleman that's donating it um, is using that as a um, tax benefit for himself and is anxious to get this done for the 2014 tax year. So if there are any questions, we answer those. I also checked into insurance because I was concerned about what impact that might have, and I spoke directly to Mark Smith, and he said that um, if we saw any change in insurance, it would be less than $200 overall, as long as we made sure that it was not operable, meaning that just as Dan said, we would have to take the battery out or take a propeller off or something so that we would be guaranteed that. Um, another concern that Mr. Poffenbogger shared with me and Dan <coughs> has addressed is if we decide that we don't want this anymore, how do we dispose of it to make sure that we're not setting on a large item that we can't get rid of? But Dan has shared that there are people who take these to scrap them out, others who may be interested in the purchase of it. Uh, Mr. Smiley has communicated with me and said he would very much appreciate the opportunity for his students to be able to engage in this at, at a level and, and learn that, especially the robotics area, that they need some of that additional work with the electrical and, and those types of things and an understanding. So he could especially see the robotics team engaging in a lot of work and opportunity within this. And I would ask that, even if we could put it on the record somehow, that any scrap value or anything that was brought in from um, the sale of that aircraft be put toward the robotics and if the robotics is not um, being um, sponsored or we're not doing that anymore it would go toward the project being the way I think it's a wonderful opportunity for our students I just wonder how long it'll take them to try to Start it up and fly away. <laughs> we'll at least move it. <laughs> because of the tax implications, time is the essence. You have to do something for the end of the year, evidently. So. Any other questions? The donor, is he requesting that any monies that may or may not ever come from the sale of the plane or the scrap go directly to the robotics team? No. No. His, um, his his interest is that students use it as a learning a lab piece um, for aviation mechanics. And that's where he stops. Would uh, 
classes be during the day? I mean, bus students out to the airport, or how, how would that work? The logistics of that haven't been discussed. Mm -hmm. But we could do that either way. I mean, we bus students to the bowling alley, we bus students right. to uptown, those types of things, but I could also see it being after school with the robotics club that we have, that that might be an opportunity for them. One, one benefit, Ryan is certified now, What's the arrangement on the hangar? Um, airport charges $100 a month. And when we applied for um, build a plane to go search for an aircraft for us, an aircraft donor, um, I went to the airport board and uh, asked if we were to receive a gift, if they would waive that, and the board voted to do that. For what period of time? Um, for a period of time that we had the aircraft in the school. My only concern, if there's educational value, I leave that up to the educators. My only concern is there's a lot of things people could donate, and we certainly are appreciative of this, but um, computers, you know, a lot of electronics out there, and we just don't want to get to the point where we're the place where folks can get end of year tax write offs. So uh, if, if there's, if there's, educational content and we're prepared to to uh, utilize this uh, and then I'm supportive and it sounds like we are but I just think that there needs to be some thought in general around what what it is we're going to take and not take that's a good point because we you know, like you say we don't become a tax write-off shelter that everybody brings in their junk and dumps off and thinks they can write it off but mm -hmm. if there's an education value to it yes I can see a good value there and no cost that's good and disposing of it, anything we get out of it's we're ahead. So, any other questions? Uh, Dan, uh, we, we, we had another plane possibility a year or two ago, and we were looking forward to that. Uh, that didn't work out. It wasn't because of our decision, is that correct? A university, it was in much better shape than a university picked it up. A university took it before us, okay. All right. Yeah, I was kind of thinking this was the same plane since you said it's a minute. It's not, though. No, it's different. Okay. University doesn't want this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? I just think we're probably okay as long as we can keep the $100 a month that we don't have to pay because you end up having to pay that hangar and then all of a sudden you start losing the value of it real right. quick. I agree. Right. But you're comfortable, Dan, that it's for the life of, or the term that we own the aircraft. Um, I, I am, I'm very comfortable in what was decided in the airport for me. I can get something in writing um, that will help tonight, but it would be good to have a memorandum of understanding between the schools and the airport. I, I, I so we could, we could do a 10 year lease do 10-year leases frequently and we can put a dollar value on it and be done with it. Uh, I think it'd be good if we thanked the airport board for that. Absolutely. You know, let, let them know that we appreciate that. It's an exciting opportunity, I think. Thank you, Dan. Any more questions? We'll need to vote on that. I make a motion that we accept this gift. Okay. Do I have to be specific? An airplane? <laughs> this this okay. gift of an airplane and the storage for it. Okay. You have a second? I'll second. Okay, a motion by Sandy and second by Lisa. Uh, yeah, was, discussion? yeah, was 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 the stipulation that any scrap funds go to the project lead the way? Is that included in this motion? I thought that would be included in the contract. Well, he he just you were suggesting that that would be a good move. That's not a requirement of the owner, correct? The the people that are volunteering of their time to make this happen would are fully behind project lead the way. 
and would like to see their efforts being returned in at some point to that program. So if that can be built into this, that would be appreciated. Okay. Good. Except the airplane and that the storage too. and any funds that we receive, if we scrap it out, goes back to Project Lead the Way. Would, would you be willing, Sandy, to uh, um, include in that the uh, assumption that we'll get the uh, green light from the airport board that the lease is a long-term lease? Yes. Yeah, I personally feel that that's an important part of this as well because yeah. if not, my conversa conversation with Mar, that would drastically change our insurance and the things mm -hmm. that we would need moving forward, mm -hmm. at which point it may not be as worthwhile as, as it could be. Okay. Do I have to say that too? <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Does the insurance, what, what insurance would cover a student who is out there and something would happen. Would, would it be the insurance on the plane or the school insurance? What? Because they're off-site and everything. What? How would that be covered? That's a. As soon as the plane is accepted by the school corporation and is delivered, then it becomes our our asset. So it's all school insurance. It's property of the school, just like a kid falling off a bus or falling out of an airplane or falling off a diving board and hitting his head on the, on the uh, walkway. Okay. The school insurance is covered awesome. in all those. Sometimes. Sometimes. Even though it's at the hangar and it's a donated facility, right. our insurance is still covered. Our insurance right. is covered. Okay. There's a theoretical possibility that the airport's insurance would also have to back it up if they had some aspect of <coughs> what it would cause the problem. Uh, I don't know what would okay. happen. But all right. If they've got litter inside our hangar and okay. so a kid trips over a you know a loose something or other maybe the right. airport would also share some responsibility right. so the airport may also have us sign a, a waiver liability for them now they might <laughs> <laughs> they probably wouldn't have five minutes ago <laughs> and, and Mart had strike that too. from the record <laughs> Mart had shared too it's very much like going on a field trip it would yeah. fall under those realms or that umbrella just as we take kids to Fort Wayne or to Chicago mm -hmm. or wherever it would fall under that as well okay any other discussion hey we have Tom, motions Tom the only question I have is with regard to someday tomorrow somewhere along the line money has to somebody has to remember that in you know December of 2014 we agreed to put money here rather than at that time making a decision that could could be a simple slip up that we would have and that would then cause us to be written up by state board of accounts or something like that for an innocent mistake. I, I understand what Dan's saying but I also think that you may be creating a, a tripwire for the administrators and administrative team that you may not want to do so I just wanted you to remember that that you know if you put that condition on there then there would be consequences if it wasn't complied with and if you scrap out an airplane it's gonna be about a couple thousand dollars anyway so I'm not sure it's the kind of money that you, know, you actually need to consider doing that but compared to the downside of that's okay. just a thought good point Okay, uh, there's no other uh, questions. Uh, all in favor, right hand, please. Okay, this is carried 6 0. Okay, uh, moving on. Information analysis uh, proposal to allow four county counseling after school program at RMS. Chris, do you have some details on that? Yeah, um, our ropes program will be ending Wednesday, and that, that was an eight-week program. This is something similar to ropes, but offered by Fort County, and uh, it's open to any student enrolled at RMS. They don't have to be a Fort County client. They don't have to be on Medicaid. Uh, so it, it's open to the entire student body, and what they'll be focusing on, much like ropes, um, went from 315 to 515, two days a week, they would do something similar. And the kids that have been involved in ROPES, many of them have um, 
decreased discipline issues and increased uh, academic achievement. So we kind of like to continue a program like that once we get back from break and they were hoping to start this in January. Um, again, at no cost to the school, at no cost to the students. In fact, the person running the program it would be the Fort County uh, gal that's in our school every day, uh, Stephanie Spencer. So um, topics they would focus on would be wellness, there would be a physical activity, part of the program, character education, um, self-esteem, goal setting, goal attainment, um, and family involvement, which is a little bit different than what Rose had to offer, so they're going to involve the families as well. Chris, how many students were in ropes? Um, we're averaging probably 22 to 24 a night. Have they expressed interest in continuing a program, those um, particular students? I was talking to Rick tonight about that, and he indicated if grant money's there, then yes, but right now I, I don't believe it's, it's there right now. <clears throat> And Elizabeth from Fort County was here, and, and that was my fault. I told her 6 30. We started at 7 30, and she had the class. She had to so I do apologize. Okay. Any questions? Did you ask him if the students were interested? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is this the YEP program? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yep, the youth uh, enrichment program, they said they've done this. Years we ago. have. Um, when, when I was in the building, it was the program that students were engaged in. Some years we had a lot of students and families involved, others not so, so much. It just kind of depended on the, on the students and their interests, but it was a worthwhile program in the past. Okay, any other questions? Well, I guess we'll need a motion to to allow for county counseling after school program at the middle school. Is it your recommendation, Mrs. Vance? Yes, absolutely. It, it was very beneficial to the students. In the in the three years I was there, it really does help some of those students become engaged and families get involved. Absolutely. So moved. Okay. Second. Now second. Motion by Joe. Second by Sandy. Any other discussion? All in favor? Right hand. Please. Okay, motion carried 6-0. Uh, now we have the fund transfer. Uh, previous purchase of a van from the capital project fund to the general fund. Uh, if you want to go over the details on that. We, I know that um, it was my understanding that the van was purchased prior to with Dan Ronk and, and Sheila involved and they believe that it could come from capital projects. <laughs> I think this is one of those awareness when you have a new business manager and you have somebody taking classes that that is learning as well and we started to question that and unfortunately because of the use of the van we cannot take it from capital projects it does need to be taken from general fund so we're going to have to um, request the transfer of those funds so that we are um, appropriate in how we do that when we become audited what was the dollar amount just under 21,000 And I was a bit interested, Joe, when, when Sherry was doing the uh, funds earlier this year, I was doing a comparison to last year at this time in the general fund, and we are ahead of where we were, not by much, but even with this, we'll be just, just a little bit ahead of where we were before. Yeah, I, I made a note to mention, um, next time I see you, we're a little lower than, than I thought we would be if the $300,000 number is, is going to be correct. Um, Think, I think we felt like we'd be a little bit higher than that, so that might take some, a little bit of looking into to see uh, why we missed a little bit. But. And it is, it is best to go ahead and transfer this because we know that it has to come out of general fund. Um, if the auditors find it, like they come in, auditors are due, you guys are due for an audit, but have been told they're like three months late for coming here. This transaction took place in the next audit period. So let's say they come around here in two more years and they see this, and this is not a legal procedure to purchase from there, they will make you move it at that point. Oh yeah, my comments are not in question of this motion. Yeah. It's just, uh, I was just talking about the general fund in, in general. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Motion to approve fund tran transfer from uh, CPF to general fund for the purchase of the van. Okay. I'll second. 
Okay, motion from Joe and second from Lisa. Any other discussion? All in favor, right hand, please. Okay, motion carried 6 0. May I ask, Joe, so you're talking about projections for the end of the year? Yeah, yeah what I'd asked earlier when we were doing the uh, fund balance is what uh, we felt the, the general fund would end at. And I think you said around 300,000 is what your gut was. That's, that's lower than what we had felt probably Projection. six months ago. Okay. okay. But because I did it in the November, I mean, where we were, and we were a bit ahead, so we'll have to look into year to that. Year. Yeah. Yeah. If we end up Did at I 300. Just right, I just ran it real quick, and I wanted to, I, I probably went maybe a little higher for November and December, not really knowing what your expenses are, because mm -hmm. I needed to know we had enough appropriation, because if we didn't have enough appropriation, and, and on the other hand, if we didn't have the cash, we had the appropriation, but we didn't have the cash to pay for that. Then we would have had to be. I would have had to come to you guys before tonight because your last time for any appropriation additions had right. to be completed by today. You know, yeah. with the state board of accounts and the DLG. Yeah, and I, I didn't mean to, to put you on the spot with the oh, question because I know it's a hard question. <laughs> You've been here, you know, two weeks, but um, okay. I, I just that's that's a number that we watched carefully, and and we felt like I think in January that we were going to be in. In, in pretty good stead uh, at the end of the year, uh, probably closer to 600,000. So, um, and, and right now we're in that ballpark, but if the 300's right, I would, um, when I asked the question, I didn't think the th 300 would be the answer. Let's put it that way. So. <laughs> I have a point of order question, and if I don't ask it now, I'll forget, and it may be swatting at a gnat, but Sandy, was your motion for the accepting donation of the plane or for all the donations? Plane. The plane, which means we haven't approved the rest of the, the rest of the, of the We donations. did that before that. No. We kept the We did that before that? Before. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Okay, any other questions? Uh, okay, we'll have to, uh, what we got? Motion. Got the motion and second? I second it. Lisa, Lisa second. All in favor, right hand, please. Okay, motion carried 6 0. Uh, distribution of school performance awards. Um, Rochester Schools was awarded right around $59,000 through um, the school performance award. The government in 2013 had set aside funds, about $30 million, for the state of Indiana to distribute to schools. Uh, the very first criteria was that we had an appropriate evaluation model for teachers in place. And so um, that was taken care of and we were approved to be monitored for the funds going forward. There were some schools in the state of Indiana which did not receive any of these funds. But they were based on a couple of different criteria and there, there was a dollar amount assigned per pupil and I can read through those if you'd like, but it was broken up to, into their um, their passing rates on the ECA, their achievement scores, growth, and then also as far as graduation rate. And so depending upon where you you um, fell into those percentiles, you were given so much per student. So we were awarded right around 59,000, 59,108. And I have spoken with RCTA, and they were hoping to have the funds distributed before Christmas going forward, I'm um, hoping for this Friday. And um, we had met and we're just really honored to be able to pass that on to teachers. There's very specific criteria about who this needs to go back to. The teachers have to be rated in the year 2013-14, either highly effective or effective in order to receive those funds. And um, bless Sherry's heart, she's done a wonderful job with the spreadsheet and going through and, and formulating those that are half-time teachers or that split some teaching positions and everything, but we feel like we'll be ready to move forward with this on Friday and we have that um, MOU with the uh, association as well to distribute those funds as required by the state. Is this the same fund that, I, I know we got something, but they said that Columbia would not get anything because they didn't do I-STEP. Well, it is, it all falls into that. Um, there, there are feeder schools when you don't take the I-STEP or the ECA and you don't have graduation. And the state, the federal had awarded per building um, amounts per pupil and how much that falls in, but because they're a feeder school. But RCTA, um, I just, we know that we're a team here, we're not islands, and they wanted to make sure that that was distributed K through 12, which is exactly where it needs to be, and we wanted to, to make sure everybody had those benefits. When you're talking graduation rate, 
it's not just grades 9 through 12. It's a culmination of that educational process. So they wanted to honor that okay. as well. Good. But you are correct. Okay. Well, that's good to hear because I'd heard the same thing that Columbia teachers wouldn't get any. So that's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, we're looking out for Columbia too. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It, we are not <laughs> islands in the stream. We are. <laughs> we are. It is a joint effort. When you're talking graduation <laughs> and those scores, it starts in, in Columbia building. And it seems like high school has a little more focus because that's where graduation and those things, things take place. But it's a culmination point. So um, we're ready to move forward and, and have those funds transferred this Friday by, um, there's not a lot of room for flux and who can be awarded this, so it's more just the, the steps and going through the process. Okay. This would include teachers who retired, who's, who served the 2013-2014 year and retired this past summer moving into the school year. Do we need a motion to approve the distribution? Yes. To approve the memorandum, memorandum of understanding between the administration and uh, okay. our CTA. Even though we haven't seen it. I have it. Oh, you have it? Yeah. Okay. I'll show it to you. All right. Have a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. Second by Jim. Most of my sending, second by Jim. Any discussion? I just had. Are, are you comfortable? I mean, I, I think it's great that you're trying to get this distributed prior to Christmas, but are you comfortable with how it's going to be distributed? And, you know, we've measured twice before we. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and, the, and again, there aren't a lot of, there's not a lot of leeway from the state. Okay. I mean, they are very specific about where they need to go. And in fact, at the superintendent's conference, they encouraged us to get that out as quickly as we could. I have, I have a question then too, um, and first of all, I'm glad that Columbia is going to be included according to our plan, but I assume that once the funds are ours, it's okay to give Columbia some even though they weren't officially part of the, yes, of the grant? Yeah, I went through the list and they, they do have Columbia specifically listed as a, uh, as a feeder school and feeder schools are permitted to be uh, part of the award. Okay. So. All right, okay, well, I didn't understand that. Okay, thank you. Now, the, the only teachers that are eligible are the effective and the effective teachers. Any, any teacher we had that would, did not meet the criterion would not be eligible, so. Okay. And, and that's all by state law. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's frankly pretty specific. We don't have mm -hmm. much, much leeway yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah, all right. The only, the only thing we could do is we could hold on to it till the end of the year instead of doing it now, but there's no, really no reason to. I mean, that's, we'd have to have it done by June 30th. Okay. Uh, we have the motion and second. Any other discussion? All in favor, right hand, please. Okay, motion carries 6 0. And I also have those percentage breakdowns if anybody would like to see how that was figured. Okay. Faculty and staff focus. Uh, hire for Rochester High School intercession. Deb Wolford and Felix Omondi. Uh, hire for food service director, Kathy Wilkinson. And uh, stipend for extra job responsibilities, uh, Rochester High School food, food service manager. And uh, update, okay, let's see, uh, let's go with the uh, Let's go with those hires and the stipend. Did you want to explain the, the stipend for the food service? Sure, absolutely. Um, the two ladies served on the interview team with me and I want to introduce Kathy Wilkinson was um, our top candidate. And um, as we were interviewing, Kathy really um, shared a passion for the organization part, the looking at the menus part, the um, the purchasing, the evaluation part of the staff, and really building that morale that needs to be built across that particular department. But as we were interviewing Vince, there was a wonderful um, love and passion for the culinary part of it, the presentation, the taste, the, the combination of those things, something that we feel like both were lacking in, in the current department as it stood. So we um, spoke as an interview team and thought that the best compromise would to bring 
both of them on board in a different capacity and try to give that a try and it's not going to be an additional cost to the food service fund um, they are self-supporting and they will continue to be so but I thought we all thought that that would be a great combination to try moving forward and, and add that to the menu the other thing that both of these people I've worked with them in the past and one thing that they have is a passion for kids and building the relationship and and whatever it takes to make sure that every student is fed every day um, came out very clearly in those and I've already seen that yet um, in the past week out mm -hmm. of out of Kathy and ensuring that those things are taken care of across the district so I think we're gonna have a great combination to try out and see those needed changes that need to happen and I will second what Jana said they were they both just literally blew us away and in the the areas that that they had the greatest passion and i think it's just nothing but a positive for our students and so we'll have two different titles one will be a food service director the other will be a food service manager well vince is already the food service manager at the high school and has been for how many years now vince four years four years at the high school. So this would be an additional stipend and what we envision him doing, and I met with the two of them, so I don't think I'm stepping on anybody's toes, but what we envision him doing is in those afternoon times, working with the managers at each of the building levels to look at their menu and then talk to them about presentation and, and how to use spices and those types of things to, to, to improve the quality and taste of the food moving forward. So he's already here in the afternoon. His day would just look a little bit differently at the beginning of each month as those menus are rolled out and as he's training the staff to think in that. Sounds good. I think it'll be a really neat change for the district. Mm -hmm. I really do. I think we as a board need to go to all the buildings and have one. <laughs> yeah, I do, yeah. Got to test it, right? Make yes. sure. Since Jim and I are going off, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to start next year. Right. <laughs> exactly. January. Can't wait. Okay. I, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, two hirings and the stipend as presented. Okay. Second. Okay, motion by Joe, second by Jim. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor, right hand. Okay, motion carried 6 0. Kathy, would you like to share your family? I know you have some people with you. Would you like to introduce your family? Um, this is my husband, Gary, and this is my mom, Evelyn Rensberger. Welcome. Welcome. Congratulations. I, I will tell you something else that Kathy shared with us for Thanksgiving. She was preparing a meal for 45 people. And to me, that was just know where they <laughs> <laughs> that's a crowd and still so smiling and she has good. what 23 christmas trees <laughs> yes yeah wow so right. it's great yeah. good deal <laughs> <laughs> you will be thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you okay uh update on job description director of special services I'm going to apologize publicly to Loretta. She came to me, I think it was probably one of the first things that in July or maybe in August and said, we really need to update this. And I was trying to learn my position and learn all of those, those, um, the new team and how we could incorporate. But some of what we were trying to do with Loretta was not only update her job description, but also make sure that her focus could be on special services for the students. So we looked at transferring English as a second language to Adam Strasser and Brian Emmert is working on picking up the high ability portion of it hand in hand with Loretta. But as we went through, I worked with Loretta to update her duties and responsibilities. Also something a little bit different that you'll see on this job description that you may not see on others is the word authorities and, and then a follow up. I think sometimes she's in a very precarious position where she, she does have authority over those special ed programs and, and those special services that she needs to have and, and sometimes as a building leader we're not exactly sure where those fall so that's the reasoning for a difference in wording there and then bless her heart she pointed out that last bulleted item any other duties is assigned or required so we added <laughs> that but one of the one of the main purposes and Loretta you're welcome to speak to this is making sure that her title was um, consistent with everybody else within within the co-op and and she has more special services for high ability for those other kids so we wanted to make sure that was a reflection of that so the uh, any other duties bullet that was added or that should be taken off <laughs> oh no that was added <laughs> we need to hurry and get this move approved tonight before she has a second thought on that 
because uh, that was kind of what happened before. So jobs <laughs> just kept piling on the Reddit. So. so next year, this time, we'll be four pages long instead of two. <laughs> okay. Uh, we need a motion to approve that job description. I think this we do, do we? Uh, yeah. Don't need a motion to approve the job description. Yeah. Yeah. Even with the change of title, the ch the <clears throat> I mean because it's a a, an, a a title change. I didn't know. I think her title's changed several times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I can just receive the report. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your patience, Loretta. Okay, under other business project update. Um, we're looking, we're working with Terry Thornsberry moving into um, the next portion of, of our construction. A lot of it is going to not, a lot of it is going to be um, non-negotiables, things with the HVAC system, with the controllers. The only aesthetic changes Terry was emailing both Brian and Tammy today. We'll be looking at some carpeting and some of the elementaries as well as some of the casework and, and sinks and toiletries and that type of thing. So moving forward, you're not going to see a lot of the aesthetics. It, they're just going to be um, those steps that absolutely need to be taken care of for the buildings to run um, effectively and, and comfortably, quite, a, quite frankly. Um, and we worked with Duke Energy at the beginning uh, or at the end of the week last week to make sure that we're ready to transition to the new electrical system. Duke Energy was out with Jim Swank and Adam Strasser and I met and we found a place to, to put that new, um, do you call them transformers? Electrical wall. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So we've got that ready <coughs> to go and actually Wednesday morning Duke Energy will shut off all of our energy or all of, for about an hour and a half, two hours, very, very early in the morning and turn that back on. And what they're going to do is go in and brace one of the units that is loose. Um, we can't honestly say if that was due to the roofing structure or if it's been loose for a period of time. And as we're looking at this, we just noticed it, but they will brace that to get us through and then we'll be able to shut the, the electric off at a time where we can control it and move forward and, and know that everybody's going to be safe in that process. But I can't say enough about Duke Energy. They've been very helpful. They've been very open. Um, they've responded to our needs. So I've appreciated working with them. Okay, any other business? Just very quickly, the Columbia and Riddle both had a tremendous amount of absenteeism today. I know that the bug is going around and, and I know that the nurses are working with them to make sure we're washing hands, spraying things down, custodians, maintenance staff taking care of those, but we, Tammy was exceptionally, uh, you, did you have yeah, about 80? 51 80? all day. 51 all day absences. Between, I know between Riddle and Columbia by the end of the day today, we had 100 students absent. So that is, that is a lot. So we're monitoring that very carefully. Great, can't get here quick enough. Exactly, yeah. exactly. We need a hard freeze and be done mm -hmm. with that. Um, and then I just wanna thank the members of the board. I took um, a couple of phone calls today um, on behalf of Jim and Joe and Bob and and people were saying why aren't you having a reception for them and we want to um, we're going to do that the first of the month it just didn't work out with all of the board members and with Bob being gone so there will be a reception at the first of the month as, as the new board members come on and and I'm welcoming that opportunity to work with them and as our former board members but I can't say enough I've experienced working with you as you know, as parents within the corporation at different levels, and I appreciate this opportunity, but there were so many who were reaching out today to make sure that you were <laughs> thanked and appreciated and, and making sure that they had the opportunity. So I anticipate in, Jan in January that there's gonna be a large turnout because there were so many who were upset with me today about why that wasn't on the agenda. So thank you so much for all that you've done for the students and, and, and for the district and for me personally as well. It went because we didn't want. It didn't try. We we tried no, to put some dates in. So <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we just want but, that on record. We <clears throat> gave it a go. Yeah. We're gonna have something. <laughs> and and Kathy is going to. Kathy already knows that's one of her first events on the on the schedules. Making sure that we have that reception. That will be at our January meeting, right? It will be on the nineteenth. Yeah. I'm anticipating, a, a, like a five thirty start time, so that we can have this beforehand. 
so that those that want to come but maybe not stay the, for the meeting have that opportunity to 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 show their thankfulness and and take that on but i right now i'm anticipating the 19th which is our regular session with a 5:30 start time for that and we'll honor you at that time but i know there are several who were questioning that i'd also like to uh, echo uh, my sentiments uh, you know a good board takes some diversity everybody brings a different view of the table and we come together and make <coughs> decisions and that's what makes a good board uh, a good community uh, you know you give your time talent and treasure and uh, you know we don't always have control over the treasure you know, with taxation and everything but we do have uh, control over our time and talent and uh, these three gentlemen have uh, gone on and above uh, supplying time and and uh, uh, talent uh, it takes a lot of time on the board and uh, you know their their jobs and perspectives uh, where they come from uh, their talent really adds to our decisions and uh, and I feel we always come up with the right decision um, a lot of times you know the board's privy to information the public doesn't know so sometimes our decisions are like well, why did they make that decision but uh, believe me we put a lot of thought and effort and uh, like to uh, thank these three guys. Appreciate it. Don't look at me. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> so, is it okay for others to say? Sure. Something? Yeah, I've I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed um, being with uh, Jim on the board as long as he's been on the board, as long as he's been elected. That is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Jim. Jim is not afraid to say difficult things, and uh, it's been great, and we're going to miss that. Uh, Joe, uh, boy, you can always count on Joe for a 30,000-foot view of a very considered opinion and well-balanced and rock-solid thinking, and we're going to miss that. And, and if Bob Poffenbarger were here, I would thank him for his encyclopedic knowledge of school and law and just detail detail and what if what if and he just he takes ideas and then protects us as we go through them and th they all three will greatly be missed <laughs>